This is low-key one of my favorite challenges to do in 2K My NBA. We are going to attempt to do the one season rebuild challenge. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? I decided to take the worst team in the NBA and the worst team in 2K in year one, the Houston Rockets. And I'm going to have three attempts, so three different saves to try to win it all in just year one. So there'll be no free agency, no draft, no player progression. I got to just work with what I have, make trades, and yeah, try to win it all. The Rockets made a trade at the deadline, moving Eric Gordon. They got back John Wall. I wasn't going to do a whole rebuild based off that, and I've actually been itching to do one of these lately. And I thought maybe it'd be like one of the more challenging teams to do with. I also thought about San Antonio, but they have just as many first round picks from the DeJounte Murray trade. They have Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, Jamie Shohan, who have good value. And the other team, was the Charlotte Hornets, but the last time I did this challenge, I think all the way back in 2K20, I used the Hornets, which it's funny that they're still in a similar position. And I thought they'd be a little bit easier because I had Lamelo Ball, who could sometimes win MVP in year two. So in year one, he's like doable to like lead you to maybe a, a, a deep playoff run. But if maybe one of the teams in Purgatory would have been a little bit more challenging because they lacked maybe the draft picks or the young talent, maybe like the Trailblazers or the Jazz or maybe the Clippers. But the Jazz do have a lot of first round picks, and while the Clippers don't do well in the simulation and they have aging kind of star players they could still get some good value in the trade market so we're doing the houston rockets if they're the worst team or not i'm not sure if i'm gonna have to move shane goon or jalen green or jabari smith today we might get desperate like if this team starts six and 14 like i gotta make moves we do have a couple future first round picks we have one from the box this originates back from the pj tucker trade we have or like it's moved kind of from time to time. We do have a Nets first round pick. Well, a couple of Nets first round picks throughout the next couple of years from the James Harden trade. We lack some of our first round picks back from the Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook trade, which is one of the kind of underrated, like terrible trades of the 21st century. I mean, it's not up there in the top 10, but like it wasn't a good trade for the Rockets at all. Cause then the next off season, they just ended up flipping Russ for John Wall. It just didn't make a lot of sense, but yeah, we are going to, I think, just simulate the start of the season. Injuries are going to be off for this because that would drive me insane if they were on. Let's go to like November 6th. It's tough that we start off with a bunch of road games, which is a little bit scary. Why would I move Sh Shane Goon for Shake Milton and Montrose Harrell? What, Daryl Morey? You're not robbing your old team. So, you know what? Things looked all right. You know, we're actually not doing terrible. Six and four to start the season. Maybe they're a little bit better in 2K than they are in real life. So, Jalen Green's off to a good start. Tori Eason. Okay. I didn't think he was going to be like that, but it comes to the point where everybody could be on the table. So, you know what? Six and four. We could wait it out till the deadline. We've lost three out of our last four. You know what? I feel like we could be around a 500 team, and I don't want to be a playing tournament team. Okay, we're eight and 11, so we got to monitor this. I think if I ever dip below five games under 500, we're currently three. I might panic and make a trade, and we have four tough Western Conference road games coming up. We already got blown out by Denver. We do beat Denver in the second one, which is nice. If we can go and split these games, I'd be happy. Oh my god, we lost by, by one to Phoenix. Okay, so if we're like 10 and 16 after this week, I'm going to look to make a trade. We have a home game against the Sixers we drop. We should beat the Spurs on the road, but you never know with 2K. Let's see. Okay, we do beat them by five, and this would be a nice win. Nope, we end up losing to Milwaukee. So we're six games under 500. We do have a... Whoa, a six-game home stretch. You know, I'm actually going to go through these games unless we go 0-3 in these home ones. Okay, yep. Uh, we're eight games under 500. I got to make a move right now. So, like, Jalen Green and Shane Goon have good trade value. I feel like I can win it all. Like, if I don't have to move Jalen Green, I won't. The problem is I can't get a star for him because he's only making $9 million. And I don't know if this is accurate in 2K like it is in real life, but these... The Rockets have more dead money than they do of actual player salaries. So it's not shown here, but they're still paying John Wall. They're going to pay him again. Derek Favors is still getting paid. Mo Harkless, Tio Maladon, Ty Jerome. They were all before this season in that weird trade with the Thunder in the offseason. They've also bought out Danny Green and Justin Holiday. So it's actually at 80 $1.7 million in dead money, which is $27 million more than players on the cap. So I honestly think this is what makes the Rockets even harder. Like we do, I think, have cap space. So I actually should have looked to maybe sign some guys. But we don't have like matching salaries to some of the top like trade targets I would look at. Like I could sign Melo. Ugh. I mean, I should have gave Melo a little bit more. Okay, actually, this is where I can finesse this a little bit. I mean, they're not going to have high value, but what we can do is release somebody like 
Boyan, I'm sorry, or Boban, excuse me, I'm sorry, Boban, we're gonna have to release you, and then we can go here, and we're gonna pay Dwight Howard an absurd amount of money, so, like, he's at 7 million, I'm gonna give Dwight probably 30 million dollars, so I can match him up with, like, a top guy on the market, of course, he's gonna accept that, he's gonna come back from Taiwan, I mean, Jabari Smith is a great trade candidate, too, he might be four stars, yeah, like, I can go out and get a trade for Paul George, Mark Williams and Rozier, I don't need Mark Williams and Rozier hasn't been all that good. Capella and Fultz is interesting because I can get Capella a good backup center and I can get Fultz who can rival uh, Kevin Porter Jr. We can get Simmons and Claxton. I don't hate that, but I don't really need a center and I'm getting offered all centers. I have Shangun right now. Jalen Williams and Mudor playing Kuminga. Ugh, I kind of like this Paul George trade a little bit better. So you know what? I'm going to go get Paul George. We're going to trade Dwight Howard, Jabari Smith, and a 2025 Nets first for Covington. $12 million contract we can move. And we're getting Paul George on this team. And it sucks. I don't think the Kevin Porter Jr. contract is kicked in yet. Oh my goodness. How? He's making three mil this year still? Okay, so that kind of hurts. Um, we could still try to move Melo's contract. Like if I could package Melo, Tate, and Kevin Porter Jr. and get a solid small forward, I would think about that. D'Lo, not an upgrade. Cam Johnson and Dinwiddie is kind of interesting to move Cam to the three because like he could be really good for me uh, if he's anything like he was in the Nets rebuild. Chris Paul and TJ Warren? I mean, that's not terrible because I would have, okay, Draymond. I'm interested about the Paul trade. I know, like, he's not great, but if he can average 10 and 10 for me, that's fine. Because Green, George, they can do most of the scoring. Shangun, too. I mean, he's off to an efficient start to the season. You know what? I'm thinking about this. Yeah, we do have to give up another first on that, but we're going to make that trade. Okay, so let's look at the new Rockets team. Uh, Chris Paul, Jalen Green, Paul George, Tar East, and Shangun with Warren, Beverly, Rocco off the bench. Like, I'm not trying to develop those young guys, so that's fine with me. I think Rocco is going to get a little bit less minutes. Same with Beverly. Uh, so I can go about... 34 that's fine 34 there let's do 31 i would even like to get shangun some more minutes okay so that's what we're gonna roll with uh we're three and a half star pace in space that's also a thing we don't have a great coach we're gonna go to seven seconds if we take a look paul george is 99 shot that's kind of high we're gonna up chris paul a little bit we're gonna up shangun a little bit and we're also gonna up jalen green can up his touches up shangun's touches that's fine like warren can be around there same with eason I mean, we should probably move beverly and covington i'd like to upgrade those spots off the bench it's not great i mean i should probably even play kj martin a little bit or Kenyon martin over like beverly honestly but then again i don't really have a backup point guard so instead of garuba uh you know instead of covington i don't think covington's very good so i'm gonna actually just sub him out and throw in Kenny Martin Jr. So we are currently 10 and 18. Let's simulate another 10 games and see how this team performs. All right, first game with Paul George and Chris Paul, we end up losing by two. Um, and it's also trial and error too, because like if I don't win it this year, I'm probably not going to go for Chris Paul and Paul George in the next attempt at this. So we're three and three since those two moves. We're about a 500 team. Yep, four and four since those moves. A couple of close losses like to the Blazers and the Knicks, which hurts. All right, so a solid week there. We're 23 and 27. All we have to do is finish as like the seventh seed in the West right now we sit as the 11th seed okay that's fine we're, we're basically tied for the 10th seed i'm not sure uh if i want to make another move right now or do i want to wait closer to the deadline possibly to upgrade the bench i don't think i mean now that we just acquired two 40 million dollar guys in paul and george i don't think we have like cap space to give um i don't know eric pascal uh how much can i give him yet yeah, five mm. 0.76 i should do that though because i could incorporate him into a trade so i'm gonna give this another week It'd be sick if we can go 3-0 and here. Blow out the Thunder. All right, that's a good start. Beat Toronto and beat the Thunder. Hell yeah, we're just one game under 500. Um, so let's go here. Can we maybe just win both games against the Sacramento Kings? That would be dope. They're at home. And we beat the Kings in the first one. Come on, beat them again. Yes, let's go. We beat them by five and by two. And we are now a game above 500. Okay. Um, I don't know if I want to move Jalen Green. That's a player that I'm thinking. Of. I don't know. He's having a good season. Like, I don't think I'm going to get much better, like uh, much else on the deadline. And Chris Paul is not $40 million. I was wrong when I said that. He's 28 mil. So if I were able to package like uh, Pascal, Covington, I don't know if like one of these Nets pick has values right now. Um, Oh, oh, it does have some value. That is huge. So we can pick up Terry Rozier, Nick Richards, Herter, and Anderson. Those are two good bench pieces. We can get Obi Toppin and Mitch Robb. Okay, so we can get... Dinwiddie. Man, Dinwiddie is probably a really good backup point guard to pick up. So I think I might do that trade. I think I'm going to pick up Spencer Dinwiddie. We're going to give the Nets their first round pick back this year. We don't really have a backup point guard, so that is an upgrade 
in that department. Um, or we did in Patrick Beverly, so it is an upgrade over Pat Bev, in my opinion. He might have even been performing all right. 39 from three, that's not bad. But let's play Dinwiddie a little bit. Let's give him 22 minutes. I might even end up finding a little bit more. Uh, Kaminsky, that's fine. And then we can up him to 25. All right. Uh, and yeah, Ty Ty, unfortunately, you're not going to be playing. All right, so this is our rotation for the end of the season. Can this win a championship? Possibly. You know what? It it, it could. It's not out of the realm. Uh, Tari Easton's having a very solid rookie season. We have Chris Paul, Jalen Green, and Paul George. Dinwiddie, Warren, Kenya Martin, Garuba off the bench. You know what? I'm kind of optimistic I could do this in my first year. I, I shouldn't get my hopes up, though. All right, so we just ended the season. Shangun won most improved. Uh, and we finished as a sixth seed. I thought that's probably around where like the highest we were going to be. Maybe I should have made those moves before we were 10 and 18. But since those moves, we ended up going, what, 35 and 19? So, yeah, with like the new and improved squad, 35 and 19 is pretty good. Uh, we had two 20-point-per-game scores. Dinwiddie, good six-man numbers. Shane Goon's efficiency is a little worrisome. Keep that in mind for possibly next year if I do want to make a move. Chris Paul, 12 and 9, that's fine. And then if I just wanted to also look how we performed in the last 30 days. Now, that might be under team stats. So if we look at the last 30 days, we were the seventh best team at 10 and 6. Okay, um, we'll see what we can do. We're taking on the Pelicans in round one. What does 2K want to do? Paul, George, they want to bench green. Are you out of your mind? Why would I do that? So we're going to probably go like 28 to Dinwiddie, 20 to Warren. Pat Bev is not going to play. Uh, it's going to be Kenny Martin Jr. And probably Garuba just being like that physical ninth man. We don't really have bigs off the bench. That's what could hurt me. So I'm going to give about 16 to Garuba. I think we're going to do about 10 to Martin, 20 to Warren, 28 to Dinwiddie. Let's do 32 to Shangun. Let's do 31 to Eason. Let's do 37 to George, 37 to Green. And then how many is Chris Paul getting? 29. I feel like that's not enough. So let's do 30 there. Maybe we lower George a little bit. 31 to Paul. I feel like I should be finding more minutes to Chris Paul. So let's do that. All right. So here goes nothing. We're four stars, seven seconds. We're taking on the Pelicans in round one. I don't know if they made any trades at this deadline. They picked up Josh Richardson. I'm just kidding. Game one. Can we win? Yes, we can. Let's go. Holy crap. We beat them by 19. I don't think any team wants to face us just because like our 10 and 18 record is probably why we're the sixth seed and not higher. George at 35 in game two. We're getting playoff P. We're not getting pandemic P. And we're up two to one. Let's go. We blow them out in game three. Paul George is going off for the Houston Rockets. So is Jalen Green. Game number four. We end up winning. Let's go. We end up winning by 24. We dropped 52 in the fourth quarter. If I did this in my first year, I would go insane. And we won in five. Holy crap. Let's go. We ended up beating them by 35 points. Paul George with 33. He averaged 30 in those five games. Jalen Green with 29, 7, and 6. He balled out. Shane Goon had a great game. 20 assists for Chris Paul. Yes, I needed that championship experience. It's funny. We brought Chris Paul back to Houston. We got Denver in round two. They swept the Grizzlies for us. Thank you. All right, I'm nervous because we can maybe do this in year one. Let's go because I think we could beat Denver. Like, it's not like we got Phoenix or Dallas or, or Memphis in the second round. I'm surprised the Lakers were the one seed and they got swept. <laughs> and I'm like, notice again, yeah, they don't even have Chris Ball there. Uh, so we go up to O'Shangun with 32. Hell yeah. Yeah, I forgot they have Kevin Porter Jr. though. I mean, they have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Wow, the Lakers were that good and they got swept. So let's see, can we beat the Nuggets and go up 3-0? Oh my god, we match up so well against them. Hell yeah, Paul George killing it. 12 assists for CP3. He's averaging 14 in the playoffs and shooting 50 from downtown. That's what I'm talking about. Dinwiddie's being very efficient in the playoffs. Tari Eason is definitely, I might have to scale back on the minutes uh, if he does not keep performing. Uh, okay. I mean, that's fine. We dropped game four. We weren't going to sweep them. That would be kind of kind of crazy if we did that and we end up beating them in five though so back-to-back -back series winning in five games we blow them out by 44 points hell yeah we're in their conference finals going up against the dallas mavericks so it's either we were getting kd and booker or Kawhi and Kyrie. we got the latter did they make any other moves not really and yeah like that's crazy you gotta go to the finals and you gotta take on either cleveland or boston like 2k's golden child so can we beat dallas in game one i might have to make a rotation change if like tar eason is just unplayable he has a good game one here all right we'll monitor eason's play i feel like i might provide more minutes to some of these other guys how is warren doing he's shooting 41 from three he's only averaging seven points garuba guess has been fine in the minutes he plays kenny martin like i don't know who i scale back minutes on maybe eason just a little bit like go down to 26 
We can get Chris Paul up to 35 and Shane Goon up to 34. Game two, we drop it. Ah, oh, is this where I'm gonna get trampled, man? Like we we dominate the first two rounds, going eight and two in those games, and then we're gonna be down two to one. Okay, all we gotta do is win game four, and it's a series, two to one. Ah, oh, it's all but over, man. It's all but over. Paul George at 27 and 12. And we end up losing in five. All right, Luca and Mitchell, your conference finals MVPs. It was a good run. We lost by one in game five. Lost by 12 in game one. Got blown out by 31 in game two. Uh, game four lost by nine. And then, yeah, that one point out hurts. Man, Shane Goon played well in the playoffs. I mean, he didn't really shoot the three ball that well. Okay, good to know, though. Paul George and Chris Paul were good. I'm not going to try to repeat the players at all. So we're going to get new guys next year. We lost to the team that won it all. All right, time to reset this. All right, round two. Let's do this. I think straight off the bat, I'm going to learn from my mistakes. Ah. <sighs> I don't want to sign Miles Bridges because I haven't done it at all in 2K23. I'm not going to do it. But what I am going to do is sign Russell Westbrook because we can afford him. Can I sign John Wall off the rip? No, I can't. I have to release somebody. So I feel like Miles Bridges is a little bit cheap because he's probably three and a half star trade value. So Boban, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to release you again just because that shit next might have a little bit of value. And John Wall, you're going to get about $40 million again from the Houston Rockets. We're going to give him, yeah, about $37 million. So I'm not waiting till I'm 10 and 18 to make any trades. I know what I'm going to do. Shane Goon is still on the table, but I think Jalen Green, I'm taking him off the table unless I can get, like, Donovan Mitchell for him. I mean, like, if I were going to throw out Russ and Jalen Green, what could I get? Uh, nothing too crazy. I think I'm fine with roll. Oh, Halliburton's interesting. Halliburton's a good point guard, but Chris Paul played so well for us last year. But like I said, I'm not going after Chris Paul. I'm not going after Paul George. Those are like two of the main guys. Like if I end up with Dinwiddie again, okay. Ooh, we can get Marketing, but Marketing's not as good in 2K. We can get Brunson and De'Aaron Fox, or, or De'Aaron Fox. I like this trade because we can get Brunson and Mitch Robb. I think I'm going to do that trade. I think we're going to get Jalen Brunson and we're going to get Mitchell Robinson in exchange for Jabari Smith and Russell Westbrook. I think I'm going to try to roll with Kevin Porter Jr. as my backup point guard. I'm going to do this trade. John Wall and Tari Eason for John Collins and Clint Capella. So Shane Goon might even come off the bench. So let's look at this team before I make any other decisions. We have Brunson, Green, Martin, Collins, Shane Goon. Yeah, I have Capella, Shane Goon, and Mitch Robb. You know what? Maybe we look for like the rim protectors, the rollers. We keep Mitch Robb and Capella as my center duos. And we look to move Shangoon. We look to move Jay Sean Tate. And we look to move Josh Christopher. What can I get for this package? Not gonna lie, I think I might do this trade. So we're gonna do Shangoon, Tate, and Christopher for Lowry Marketing with the Utah Jazz. So that is gonna kind of solidify the starting lineup for now. Not the greatest defensive lineup, so there may need to be another move, but we're pretty deep, honestly. We're going to keep the 10-man rotation strong. If I were to look at some shot tendencies, yeah, we got to up these. So Brunson's going to go up to an 80. Uh, he can go up to an 80 touch as well. Uh, Markkinen, he's probably going to go up to like an 84. Uh, we can up that to an 80. Green, I think I want to get him up to an 85. I'm cool with him being like the number one scorer. Uh, he can have like a 85 touch. Uh, I don't really know where you should have your touch tendency to your shot tendency so if you can let me know that down below i'd appreciate it like collins i'm gonna make a tad bit higher Kenyon martin i should make a little bit higher and same with pat bev so let's see how this team performs is it a good seven seconds lineup probably not i, I can't really see it right, it's three and a half stars because brunson and green are such good fits so let's start this uh simulation if we start off worse than 10 and 18 that'd be kind of funny all right so it's looking pretty good for us we're 28 and 16 i think i'm gonna try to ride this out into the deadline and then we're gonna look at our offensive stats and our defensive stats to see if i should add another defender because i feel like having brunson and green as well as markinen and collins in your starting lineup isn't great defensively i mean perfect like i'm trying to think like of the perfect three and you got to add at the power forward spot i do have all those draft picks so I'm wondering if I could maybe leverage John Collins into picking up Pascal Siakam. But we're doing so well, I don't want to mess things up. Because we are 38-17. and 17. We have now turned this team into the one seed. So that's what I should have did last year. I should have made these moves in year one. But if we take a look at our player stats, there's no like overwhelming top score which is fine um we have marketing and brunson at the top i got a little backlash on my tweet that i said brunson could surpass marketing as the most improved player in the second half of the season i mean it's not crazy because brunson has improved a lot from last year's season the jazz might be on their way out of the playoff picture while the knicks are in the playoff picture right now which i think should go into voters minds you know what? i'm not saying it's like definitely could happen 
I'd say there's a chance. Like, we have Green. Mitch Robb is probably the starting center. I don't know. Him and Capella, I think, is a good duo. Porter Jr. off the bench. Collins has been efficient, though, for us. I mean, let's see. Maybe 2K doesn't mind this team defensively. Maybe it's not that bad. Like, offensively, we're the number one team in the league. Defensively, we're a little bit worse. Okay. We're, like, the 12th best team in the league. So, maybe I should look to make a move. Does that Nets pick have value right now? Let's see. Because if I threw up Collins and Ty Ty, it does have two stars. All right. I don't know. Like, man, I'd get Tier Fox. And then do I move Brunson for a power forward? Oh, man. That's... Oh, wow. We're really going to make this difficult for me. I'm doing so well, though. Like, Jeremy Grant, because he can defend and shoot. Hey, eh, can he shoot, though? Not really. But he's a better defender. We know Draymond's a great defender. Kuzma, not the defender I want. You know what? I'm going to risk it with this team. They're playing so well. We're currently on a nine game winning streak f it this might be stupid but i'm not gonna make any moves at the deadline i'm hoping this team is just that good we're gonna finish as the one seed in the west and then we could take our chances in the playoffs so luka Doncic is your mvp bancaro is your rookie of the year mitch robb with those numbers is your sixth man of the year hell yeah shane good most improved okay we saw that in the last time we finished as the one seed though in the western conference Ooh, all right i feel more confident about this now we won 60 games I feel like we could have been around that if I made those moves last year getting Chris Paul and Paul George earlier in the season. Our winning score ended up being Lowry Markkinen, who ended up shooting 38 from three and 83 from the line. Jalen Green, 17 and a half points, three rebounds, 4.7 assists, 37 from three. We'll see if he can take it up a notch in the playoffs. Brunson, 17 and eight, 50, 40, 90 guy. KPJ was a good sixth man. Mitch Robb, Collins, Capella. Okay, so we're taking on the Memphis Grizzlies in round one. That's a tough eight seed to face. I don't know how I'm going to make this rotation look. I think we're going to go to a nine man. Uh, and since we have Porter Jr. off the bench, it's going to be Kaminsky. I'm going to play him over Garuba. I don't know though. I kind of like Garuba's um, physicality there. So I'm going to play him 10 minutes. Kenny Martin's going to go down to 15. Mitch Robb and Capella each at 28. That's fine. KPJ at 24. Collins, 28 as well. Markin in 33. Green, 36. 38 to Brunson. See how this works, man. I'm nervous. Round one against the Grizzlies. We win game one by 27 points. Capella was our leading scorer. Game two, we win. Let's freaking go, man. We win by 13. Brunson with 34-9. Green with 34-6. and He's like, Green could take over like that. We're up 3-0. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We end up winning by 23 points. Uh, Brunson with 36-11. and 11. Green with 25-11. and 11. And then game four, we sweep them. All right, let's go. I got the confidence right now. We beat a good team. Marketing with 35. He averaged 22 in those four games. Brunson averaged 30 and 10. I'm glad I didn't trade him for De'Aaron Fox. Green averaged 25 and 9. I know Green was like that passing the ball. All right, so in round two, we got Dallas to get revenge for the last attempt at this, but we do have to go up against Luke and Kyrie, obviously. Game one, we lost. Okay, um, we lost by two at home. Damn, <laughs> Luka with 35, 20, and 7. Kyrie 39, 0, and 10. Game two, okay, huge win. Oof, all right, we won by 11. Green and Brunson had great games, marking in as well. Game three, yes, yes, we take a 2 to 1 lead. We win by eight. Luka at a 39 point triple double, didn't matter because Green at 32. Game four, Yes, we're up three to one. Okay, we win by six on the road. Luka had another triple double. It did not matter. We had four guys score 20 plus. Game five, oh, we lost, okay. We lost by 12, that's fine, that's fine. Game six, don't lose this one. Yes, we're in the conference finals. Let's freaking go, man. All right, Luka had 22. I'm so glad I don't have to face him anymore. Green had 32 here. All right, so in the first and second save of this, or the first and second attempt, we are in the Western Conference Finals, but we got to take on the Denver Nuggets, which is a team we had no problem in the last... I keep wanting to say last year, but the last try. Oh, man, we really got to be Denver. Like, in the last game, like, we had Cleveland and Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. Now it's either Chicago or Atlanta. Game one, we lost. Okay, by seven. Clint Capella, Mitch Robb, Guard Jokic for your life. Who shot one for 10 in this game? KPJ. That's not what we need. If we go down 2 0, I'm making a rotation change. Okay, huge win there by 38 points. So we could blow them out. We had four guys score north of 20. Game three, we win. Oh my God, we're two games away from the NBA Finals. Am I going to complete the one season challenge now? It's 2 to 2. Oh my God, we can put 15 to 4. Our defense is really catching up to us. Um, Brunson with a good game. Shot 2 for 9 from 3. We go up 3 to 2, though. All right, we blow them out. Green with a 40-piece. Can we win game six? 
Yes, we can. Let's go. We're going up against the Chicago Bulls in the NBA Finals. Lonzo's your Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Brunson, your Western Conference Finals MVP, 26 and 12. I've seen the Bulls win it a lot in year one, which is kind of um, scary that we might lose to them, but here goes nothing. Game one, we win. Oh, man. Let's go. Jalen Green with 36, marketing with 26 and 18. Brunson, 21 and 13. Game two, we're up 2 Let's go, man. Let's go. Marketing with 38. I kind of love this team. It's fun offensively, man. It score a lot of points. We went to the league in offense, and we're up 3-0. I'm going to complete it in my second attempt. Let's go, man. Let's go. Are we going to sweep them? We're on the road at the United Center, United Arena, United Center, I believe, and we're up by 24 points. Hell yeah. Let's win this game. We're up by 40. All right, man. We kind of dom- Man, we didn't really dominate, but- um, we dominated the NBA Finals. Uh, the Nuggets gave us a run for our money. Like, the Mavericks, there were some close games. The Grizzlies were fine against. Okay, I already turned it over. And foul to start this. Nice. But yeah, the Rockets, like, were fun to do. I mean, I did get the benefit of the doubt of having all that cap space because there's nobody getting paid on this team. So I was able to sign guys like Russell Westbrook and John Wall, which helped us in some trades, at least to match the money. Like, same thing last year with Melo and Dwight Howard. As Brunson's going to take a three, he's going to miss that. But like Jabari Smith's high trade value helps. Like we used Tari Eason's high trade value and Shane Goons this year as well. We didn't trade Jalen Green. He plays very well in the playoffs in year one, which is nice. I don't know if there would have been a tougher team. Um, I guess the Spurs might have been a little bit tougher now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, like it really goes back to the trade value as well. Because I feel like Johnson of Vassell might be like a little bit below uh, Jalen Green. But probably similar to Jabari Smith or around that area if they're the same. So like... I don't know, as we're getting so many re- Oh my god, John Collins, what just happened? But I guess you have that going for them. But the Spurs do have those first round picks from the Hawks, which probably have less value since they're far out than the Nets. And I, I was thinking about doing the Spurs as well. And if you guys want to see me attempt this with the San Antonio Spurs, drop a thumbs up. Or if you do think Charlotte may be tougher, I think those are probably the other tough teams. Because like if you're Detroit, you have Kate Cunningham. The Magic aren't tough because you have that Bulls first and you have Franz and Mancaro. Like you're chilling with Orlando. That's why I said maybe a team like the Clippers or the Blazers or the Wizards would be tough because they're kind of in purgatory. For the Wizards, though, you do have some trade candidates. Like, you you can move Beal, you can move Kuzma, Porzingis, Gafford. Even Johnny Davis might have two and a half, three stars to move. Miami, too. Like, they may... Eh, Miami, maybe not that tough as Collins was that down. He's 24 and 15 in game four. I mean, this team was fun as hell. Not the best defensive team ever, but probably one of the better offensive teams. Like, everybody on this team, or at least in the starting five, can kind of go for 20 on any given night besides the center position. Like, Collins, Brunson... Marking in green. I'm taking so many jump shots with Brunson, but we're getting, I was gonna say, decent amount of offensive rebounds. We didn't get it there. Well, we're gonna win this game by 30 plus, and we are gonna sweep the Chicago Bulls to complete the challenge in just two attempts. I didn't even need to use the third attempt, which is kind of nice. So the Rockets win it all in year one. Lowry Markinen is your finals MVP. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think down below. Drop a like if you guys did enjoy the video. If you want to see me attempt this with maybe the Spurs, maybe the Hornets, like, but yeah, please let me know. Cause like instead of doing like a post Eric Gordon. In Rockets rebuild, I was gonna do this. And maybe instead of doing a post Yaka Purtle rebuild, I could do this with the Spurs and just put a challenge on it. Maybe I do it where I can only make two to three trades a season, or I can't sign anybody in free agency, make it even more challenging. Or I can't trade any draft picks because teams can't use those anyway. So maybe that's kind of uh, at a disadvantage for me going forward if we want to do it like that. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter, justballin.net. It goes to your inbox every day, Monday through Friday, getting up to date on everything NBA related, stats, like rumors, box scores, college box scores as well. I'm just releasing my big board out there. So I'd appreciate it if you guys check that out. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that is in the description. I'm also bringing back my NFL channel. Link to that will be in the description as well. Me and a couple buddies are going to be making some NFL videos on there, which I'm super excited for now that we're in the off season. So, hey, if you like NFL content, you like my content, make sure you subscribe over there. Link to that's in the description. It's going to be called the triple option. There's three of us. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace.